What is a good MCAT score? A very popular question we're asked here at Inspire Advantage, so today we're going to dive right into this topic. Nadine here with Inspire Advantage, helping students get accepted into medical school and other professional programs. Before we can consider what a good MCAT score is, we need to understand how the MCAT is actually scored. There are four sections of the test, the biological and biochemical foundations of living systems, the chemical and physical foundations of biological systems, the psychological, social, and biological foundations of behavior, and finally, the critical analysis and reasoning skills, known as CAR section. There are 59 questions in the first three sections I mentioned, and 53 questions in the CAR section. Your number score from each of these four sections is converted to a scaled score between 118, the lowest score, and 132, the highest score. Why? To account for slight variations in difficulty between tests. So, the lowest possible MCAT score is 472, and the highest possible MCAT score is a 528. Now, let's talk about percentiles, which you'll see on your MCAT score report. According to the AAMC, the percentile rank shows the percentages of test takers who received the same scores or lower scores on the exam than you did. So essentially, this is a way for you to see how your scores compare to the scores of other test takers. For example, a percentile rank score of 86 means you scored better than 86% of all test takers. Nice. For what is actually considered a good MCAT score, let's look at the scores of both applicants and matriculants to U.S. med schools. According to the most recent data from the AAMC, around 62,000 applicants applied to medical school, and those applicants had a mean MCAT score of 505. You might be thinking, all right, great, I'll aim for a 505, but this isn't the end of the story. When we jump into matriculant data from the AAMC, the mean MCAT score is much higher, a 511.9, essentially a 512. So does that mean if you receive a 512 or close to it on the MCAT, it's a good score? Well, sort of. Not exactly the answer you were hoping for? Let's dive in deeper. Defining a good MCAT score is tricky. If a 512 is considered good or competitive at some schools, it may not be as competitive at another school. For example, the average MCAT score of accepted students to Harvard Medical School is a 519, while at Mayo Clinic, it's a 521. When deciding what is considered a good MCAT score, review the average MCAT score at the specific schools you're applying to. Use that to guide you. And remember, averages are just that, averages. So even if a school's average MCAT score is a 517, remember, many students will be accepted with scores both above and below that number. So don't let any specific numbers discourage you. Another thing I want to point out is that your MCAT score is only one piece of the admissions process. Most medical schools review applicants holistically, so while your MCAT score is important, it isn't the only factor you'll be assessed on. If you haven't taken the MCAT yet, or if you didn't achieve your best score and are going to retake it, let me leave you with a few tips to help you achieve the best score possible. Start your MCAT prep early. You could start a year before your exam or a few months, depending on your baseline level of knowledge. Did you know that most students spend around 200 to 300 hours studying for the MCAT? That's a lot of hours and not something you want to leave until the last minute. So make sure you start preparing early, giving yourself plenty of time. The next tip is to learn how you retain information best. Do you prefer studying on weekends or weekdays? Do you retain more information in the morning or at night? Do you prefer to study alone, in a group, or one-on-one -on -one with the help of a tutor? Find out what works for you and don't compare your study schedule to that of others. The idea is to find out what is best suited for you and design a study schedule based around that. The next tip is to take practice tests that most closely resemble the MCAT. Where can you find these practice tests? Head on over to the AAMC website. They offer full length practice tests for free. When you're taking a practice test, remember to simulate the actual MCAT as much as possible. This means taking the test in a quiet environment without distractions in one sitting while timing yourself. The last tip I want to leave you with is to understand areas of improvement and don't be afraid to ask for help. It's natural to have areas of the MCAT that you're struggling with. Don't hesitate to reach out to an experienced MCAT tutor who can work with you one-on-one -on -one to identify your strengths and potential improvement areas to help you maximize your MCAT score. Thanks for tuning into this video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for all the latest and greatest on the med school application process. Cheers to your success.